should I should be. Only right. you would know that. That is a good that is a good point. <laughs> G'day all you beautiful people out there, my name is Mortal Phoenix and welcome to a very special interview with Rave It Up CEO and founder, Miss Lauren Yates. Hi guys. So, Thank you so much for having me today, Jason. Thanks for the offer. You're welcome. So, let's, get, let's just get straight into it. During high school, you developed a website dedicated to Justin Bieber. Yes. I so, <laughs> love how he starts with that. Yep. <laughs> so, we'll go from the top of the timeline. Yes. So, would you say that's where your your pursuit of journalism really kind of kicked off. Definitely. Um, I was always a lover of celebrities. So when I was such a big fan of Justin Bieber, I'm like, I really wanted to meet him at that time. It was, you know, when he was 16, he was about to come for his promo tour. And I'm like- Oh, pre-puberty. Oh, yeah. Um, when he still had the flick hair and everything. Oh. But I, I was looking at it going, you know, I really wanted to meet him. And my, my both my parents were like, Lauren, he has heaps of fans. <laughs> How do you think you're going to meet him and really stand out? So that's when I came up with the idea of the website. And it actually does still exist if anybody wants to check it out. I love JustinBieber.org. There's a link Haven't, in the description. Have not updated it for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> but my photo with him is there as well. And I think it just... I was really shy back then too, so I don't think he'll remember me at all. I was I was just that fan that's like, ah, uh, uh. It's just starry-eyed. Just starry-eyed. so much. But it was just the start of everything because yeah. I was among uh, one of ten girls that actually won this competition to meet him. And just to be amongst just a very sh small amount of people to meet him, I was like, this is amazing. This is how to do it. Not just, you know... <laughs> <laughs> wait in a really long line to meet your favorite celebrity why not be in and amongst it but I did not really think of being a journalist back then I was just kind of writing updating the website just for fun you know yeah, sort, of, like, sort of like a hobby yeah exactly and it was kind of a way for all us Justin Bieber fans to get together and talk about our favorite guy and yeah, it was just you know this is what Justin Bieber's doing at the moment <laughs> it wasn't really anything more than that yeah so you after that, you kind of, you, you developed Rave It Up and then you've interviewed a lot of celebrities from that. Do you still get flustered or like overwhelmed whenever you start an interview with like, say for instance, Hugh Jackman or Justice Crew? I was a little nervous before Hugh Jackman, but I don't, I don't get starstruck anymore. I think after doing it for eight years, it's kind of just, um, it's turned, I don't see celebrities as celebrities anymore. I just think they are following their passions. Mm. They have such a cool job yeah. and everybody has a story and I just want to hear about it. And because I'm such a, you know, conversational person and, you know, very talkative and friendly, I love talking to people. So I think at the beginning, hell yes, I was <laughs> like, <laughs> obviously Justin Bieber, I barely even talked to him. And then my very first interview was Justice Crew and I was a huge fan of theirs. Um, that was after my Justin Bieber phase, and then I went through the Justice Crew phase. <laughs> but yeah, I was I was I was very starstruck when I met them, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, not only yeah. are they amazing and they're celebrities, but they are so good looking. <laughs> <laughs> I think every girl can agree with that one. Um, Certain guys can too. Yeah, but now it's just uh, I, I think guests also appreciate that when you yep. don't treat them like celebrities because you treat you know, them like a human being they are they are human yeah yeah exactly so to answer your question no i don't <laughs> um <laughs> it might be a little nerves but that's just because i i'm a perfectionist and i like to make it yeah really of course. perfect uh, yeah but i mean that's to be expected with of course anything. yeah obviously it's my brand and I, it's my reputation on the line yeah yeah so normally you're in you're in my position yes being the <laughs> interviewer um is there any sort of pre-interview rituals or anything you do to kind of get through the interview with ease? When the guest is already there or beforehand? Both. Both? Uh, beforehand, I research the person like I'm a stalker. And I know that <laughs> sounds bad, but you kind of need to. Yeah. I've watched so many interviews where people don't do their research and it's like, why would you do that? Yeah. You, you know, you ask basic questions and, you know, the guest is not going to like that because obviously they've answered the question so many times, but also it's kind of respect a, per a person's time. Yeah, like of course. You, you want 
uh, them to respect your time, but you've got to respect theirs in return. Yeah. You've got to do your research beforehand. So I do a lot of research and people are always like, why? And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> I want to go in already knowing this person so that I can ask even deeper and meaningful questions yeah. that they haven't gotten before. And that's how I stand out from other interviewers. And then when they're there, um, I think it's really important to just build rapport even before you start an interview. Um, when you have a bit of a time restraint, it's a bit hard. Like Hugh Jackman only, only got nine minutes with. That's not a nine minute interview. That's nine <laughs> minutes of me walking into the room <laughs> and saying, hi, don't regret it though. Got a, got a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Hi uh, Hugh, great interview, see you later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I didn't get time to really build rapport with him before the interview. So even though people always watch that interview usually first or that's like yeah. their favourite, it's like, really? Like, um, when I'm really known for long in-depth interviews, that was quite hard. But, um, yeah, building rapport before an interview and also I always ask a guest before I even start, is there anything you don't want to talk about? And people really respect that. Like, I remember when I interviewed Rob Mills, mm. you know, he, he said, oh, you know, nothing about Paris Hilton. And I'm like, wasn't going to because that, <laughs> that's a whole, like... There's a, there's a line you don't want to cross when it comes to their personal yeah, life, and that course. is definitely one of them. And I'm surprised that interviewers even ask him about that. I was like, mm. just let it be. <laughs> it's in the past. He's a talented worry. guy. Talk to him about his work. So yeah. uh, I think that's, that's really important to remember, even for you, as you go on with your journalism career. <laughs> Do that before <laughs> interviews. Because even sometimes people want to, you know, keep things a secret or they want to keep things uh, like new projects under wraps yeah. and everything. Yeah. Like, you know what's coming up. I've told you, but I don't, I'm not ready to share it yet because it's a big project. Yes. And when it does come out... Keep that under a lock and safe and in the bottom of the deepest ocean. Yes, I'm very I'm very excited to share it with everyone, though. <laughs> in time, guys, in time. So I'm going to keep you on the edge of your seat. You'll be, you'll be ready. Yeah. All good. So you founded Rave It Up in... 2010. 2010, yes. And later in 2011, you pitched it to SWR and Black Dan. Yes. Was that was that a smooth sort of way to get in, and how like how did it all sort of come about? It wasn't smooth, just you know, from pitching it and getting it. Um, I'd actually put my foot in the door before I even pitched it. So there was a show called the Stefan and Heinrich Show, and I was listening to that show because you know. First of all, they had Justice for a lot, so I was like, I'll listen to that. <laughs> and they were giving away, you know, some signed shirts of theirs and things like that. And I was just listening going, this is, first of all, a very entertaining show. And it's two guys that are my age. They're actually younger than me. And I'm like, this is incredible, you know? And so I decided I'd call up to win this, you know, Justice Crew shirt. <laughs> and uh, I fortunately didn't get it. But then off air, I was just chatting to the main presenter and I'm like... I'm really interested in this field and it's something I want to get into. Is there any chance, you know, uh, is there any sort of work experience program you could put me through? And I'd love to just be around and experience it all. He said, oh, you know, little did I know it was a community station. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, uh, there's not, not like a proper program we can put you through. But um, I gave, gave him my details and he gave me a call on Monday. And he uh, just said, just come in next week and we'll show you around and we'll see how we go from there. And I came in, they loved me. <laughs> that He had a lot of followers on um, Twitter as well, you know, yeah. back when Twitter was really big. I think it still is, it's just not... It's just not as prominent <laughs> not as, as what prominent, it was. Yeah. And uh, he just got me to update his social media throughout the show and I was just, he found me really helpful. So he's like, do you want to come back next week? And I'm like, hell yes. <laughs> so I came back every single week after that and I, I became his assistant. So uh, I'd come up with a lot of the topics for the show as yeah. well and organise the interviews. So I was already in the station and everyone knew me. Uh, and then they eventually got me on as co-host, which was very exciting. And then it turned into the Stefan, Heinrich and Lauren show. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> got my Bobby, name in the I title. Did it. Oh, and the fans loved it because they had a lot of female fans. Yeah. And they always heard, you know, Assistant Lauren in the background. <laughs> and then finally I got on air and they're like, oh, good, we can have a girl's opinion. <laughs> these, these guys talking about, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then eventually Heinrich moved on. He wanted to get uh, into sports. So he obviously went on to follow his passion. And so it turned into a Stefan Lauren show. That was fun for a while. And, you know, I'm still really good friends with, with Stefan because he's moved on now as well. His yep. other passion was becoming a cop, and he has. I'm very proud of him. Um, but, yeah, he keeps up with everything I'm doing, and he's just so proud. And I still really, especially 
in terms of the radio show, I owe my success to him. Mm. And I always say that to him. He's like, oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, like, it, it, you gave me the chance and the opportunity to come in. I wouldn't have known really what other step to take, to be honest. Yeah. So when he eventually moved on, I had already started the Rave It Up website and I thought, oh, this could be like a brand. I could have Rave It Up Radio. So that's when I eventually pitched the show. And because I already had the contacts and yeah. they knew I was reliable and I was a good host, they pretty much accepted it straight away. And they're like, what a great show to have on the station. Yeah. yeah. So it was Bring some a, young blood. <laughs> of course. Absolutely. That's always good. Hmm. So was it quite a surreal experience at the start, doing your own show for the first time? Absolutely. Very terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was so used to working off someone too. It yeah. was, you know, you had a co-host. When I had my own show, I had to work by myself. Yeah. And I, I listened back to those shows and I'm like, oh, it's so cringeworthy. <laughs> like, <laughs> me trying to talk to the audience without getting a response, if that makes sense. Because yeah. it's very hard to do a conversation without getting something back. Yeah, it's like, it's like with some of my videos. You talk to a camera and you're just like... Oh, wait, there's no one there to <laughs> You're listening, listen. but you can't answer me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Until later with comments on YouTube. But yes. uh, So that was really hard, but I just kind of... I always listen back to my work, and obviously I look up to other presenters, and I would just perfect myself. And then that's eventually when I thought, okay, I need to start putting interviews in the show. Yeah. And that's when it became a lot easier because I had someone to work off. Yeah. And now I just, whenever I do present by myself, it's just, you know, to introduce the show and introduce a new song. And yeah, so it's, it's a lot easier now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so building on from that, you said that you follow a lot of journalists and radio yes. presenters and some of them are your greatest inspiration. So in amongst that, who are your top five? Ooh, top five. I've never thought of my top five before. <laughs> um, I've always loved Juliana Rancic on E! News. Uh, she's, she's actually the reason I got into journalism, to be honest. I always looked at her and I was like, oh my God, I want to work for E! News. Mm. So it just looks incredible to be amongst all of that. And then uh, I've been raised by entrepreneurs and I'm like, why work for E! News when I could be E! News? <laughs> or something like E! News, you know? So that's really when Rate That Up was born. But... Her, I love James Corden in his carpool karaoke. <laughs> Who doesn't love James oh, Corden? I know he's just—he's so talented, and he's such a good singer as well. Um, him, Jimmy Fallon, always watch his videos <laughs> on YouTube. He's just so. People sometimes just, um, you know, make fun of him, and they say he laughs too much and things, or like a fake laugh. Yeah. And I don't find that. I find him so genuine. But you know, everyone's got their opinion. Um, so, that, yeah, that's three. Um, who else? I do really like... Um, you can take them all leave them, to be honest, but uh, Mikey and Emma are on the edge. Ah, uh, yes. Sometimes they talk about things you're like, really, you're talking about that? But other times they're just so entertaining. Yeah. Um, and who else do I really look up to? So I think I'm uh, too. Yes, but um, I cannot believe I've even forget. These, these are my top ones. How did I forget these? <laughs> I'm just thinking about because I was watching YouTube before this interview, and I'm like, oh yeah, I was watching them. <laughs> uh, Ellen DeGeneres, uh, she course. she is my love, love her, <laughs> and Oprah. You know, back before even Ellen was as big as she is, Oprah yeah. was the huge. I, I remember at school, I'd be like, you know, to my friends, oh, have you, have you watched Oprah? And they're like, huh? What? Who's Oprah? And I was like, where that. have you been living? <laughs> <laughs> but no, Oprah. Where is this rock you're staying at? Yeah, and I love where the turn Oprah's taken now, where she doesn't have the Oprah show anymore, but she's got like the Oprah masterclasses and Oprah's next chapter and everything like that. And it's mm. just, it's so positive. And, you know, we, we need more positivity in the world. So I'm loving what she's doing. And she's still loving what she's doing as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I suppose that builds on from the comps that, like, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Absolutely, and I couldn't agree more with that because yeah. I wake up every morning and I love what I do. You know, I'm like, oh, who am I going to interview now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, moving further down the timeline, yes. in 2014, you graduated with your Bachelor in Journalism from Maclay College. Yes. So, was that sort of when you had a bit of a reality check and was like, this is actually my thing now? Um, well, it's really funny, just before I went to Maclay, like, I... Straight away when I graduated school, I signed up for McClay. Um, I Same actually, here. yeah, <laughs> it's really funny. I signed up one day before the classes. <laughs> Sorry, McClay. <laughs> But it was because I was having a chat to my mum after school and, you know, I was at the same school for 13 years, all the way from kindergarten to year 12. 
all I really wanted to do was take a year break. Mm. I was like, I already had Rave It Up and it was really successful. And I'm like, if I took the year year just to have a break, could you, could you imagine where I'd take the business? And anyway, well, mum's just like, well, you know, what did, <laughs> bring it back to Juliana Rancic, <laughs> Uh, on for in news, uh, what did she do? Like, does she have a bachelor? And I looked it up and I was like, oh my God, she does. And a lot of the people I do look up to have bachelors. And mum's like, that, you know, to do a diploma for McClay is only a year. Mm. <laughs> Doing a plug. <laughs> <laughs> Quick course. Yeah, this was before they introduced the bachelor. And uh, mum's like, it's a year. Like, mm. what have you got to lose? You get a diploma at the end and you've learnt TV, radio and print. And that'll just only enhance Rave It Up. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's so true. So that's when I signed up a day before. And then we were kind of like the guinea pigs. They introduced the bachelor degree. We were the first people to really do it. So I decided to stay an extra year. I was like, two years for a degree? That's so amazing. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Yeah, so I already had Rave It Up. So it was good to just enhance yeah. what I already know, but also learn so much that yeah. I still use to this day. And it was also funny to see how many people were kind of how many fake friends I made as well because it was like oh gotta hang with her she's got a radio show little did they know the extent of Rave It Up but they just knew I had a radio show <laughs> yeah. like in the radio course it was like oh gotta become friends with her she's gonna get good marks stick, stick close to this one she'll she'll do she'll, she'll provide well she'll do well yes if you're watching she's successful now and you're probably somewhere else doing your own thing it was a good life lesson though yeah a, a lot of them have gone out and done amazing things i'll give them that um but it was a good life lesson though it's, it's the quality over quantity for friends and always in this business you're gonna find people that are just trying to use you mm. and i i can totally see them before they even come now it's great <laughs> <laughs> i know when they're genuine or not <laughs> Yeah, that's. I think that's probably a good thing to have. You really got to have like a keen eye. Absolutely, yeah. That's why people always like, you know, how or why you're becoming friends with the people that you interview. It's like, well, they get it. Yeah, they understand. Yeah, yeah they're passionate about what they do too. They're positive. It's exactly the people that I want to hang around because, you know, they we lift each other up. Yeah. Yeah. So as well as rave it up, you do a bajillion other things, but um, <laughs> you're also... To say the least, thank you for no noticing. <laughs> <laughs> Some but, people don't. They're like, oh, you just do rave it up. What do you do for the rest of your time? <laughs> but you, you, yeah, fair enough. Like, you really got to <laughs> think about things. Yeah. But you're also a mentor for Tomorrow's Youth Empower You program and yes. Spirit for Good, the Free Spirit Girl. Um, aside from those, what else are you doing inside? What else? <laughs> um, what, 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 are, what are the other 999 million other things, things? do I do? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, with the Empower You programs, I find them just so incredible. And it is getting to the time now where I'm, I might be moving on from that. But I'm really glad that I have... I did Empower You when I was... Just before I made Rave It Up. So just after I met Justin Bieber and it's an empowerment program for the youth and it just changed my life because I was the shyest person you'd ever meet before that and it just really made me break down my barriers and not care what other people think. That was something that when I was younger, I cared way too much about what people think. I'm like, why? I wasted all that time and uh, where I could have been loving myself more and really going for my dreams that I was always fearful. So that program just, Check it out, yes, Empower You, Tomorrow's Youth. Uh, and I'm still amongst all those incredible people. And I decided, okay, I want to become part of the Assist team because I want to be one of those people that help the, the younger generation come in and just change their lives for the better. It's just, it gives, I'm giving, getting goosebumps. <laughs> it gives me goosebumps to see the transformations of these kids from when they first walk in the door and most of them are forced to be there by their parents and they hate it and it's like, oh. But by the end, they come up and hug you and go, thank you. You've, you've changed my life and I'm definitely coming back. And that is so lovely that I've helped to make the world a better place, yeah. especially for young people where we do have all these problems with depression and anxiety and suicide is just, you know, becoming the world's biggest killer and it's just... It saddens me. So that is something that I am so passionate about um, to help the youth. And that's why I talk to a lot of my guests about these sort of topics, just to show that my listeners and my viewers that you're not going through it alone. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really important to know. Um, 
Otherwise, my other hobbies, I am like, I'm a dancer. Uh, I love doing that for exercise. I do aerial acrobatics as well. Fantastic exercise, like aerial silks, go check that out. Oh, that has changed my life. I had no upper body strength before that. <laughs> <laughs> now people watch my watch my videos on Facebook for aerial silks. And they're like, How do you do that? <laughs> A lot of training, a lot of training, um, and I also love singing. So I'm a very, uh, as you can tell, <laughs> I'm all, I'm doing a lot of things in the entertainment sector, and I'm very <laughs> creative, and that's never going to change. Yeah. Cool. So staying with that, yes. you are the main person for Rave It Up. You do have writers on the side. Yes. And a cameraman. And a cameraman. Yeah. Who I love my team. <laughs> Thank you guys. But they're, they're not here at the moment. No, I, I couldn't be more appreciative for them though, because a lot of them have been with me from not the very start, but very close to the start. Yeah. Because it just got too much for me to update the website every single day and somehow grow the business. Yeah. Uh, so I'm very, very grateful for them. So, staying on that, you what else do you do for Rave It Up? Because you do, as I said, a bajillion other things. A, yeah, a bajillion other things. <laughs> um, at the moment, you know, whenever you watch a video and it says, you know, video filmed by Tom Benson, but then video edited by Rave It Up, I am Rave It Up. <laughs> <laughs> she is the site. I am the Rave It Up. But it's good that by the time I do get an editor that I don't even have to go back and change all those videos being edited by, you know what I mm. mean? Because... It is. It's Rave It Up's property anyway, yeah. so it could be edited by anybody. <laughs> uh, what you say. Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but everything from the YouTube channel to the radio show to the weekly wraps to where do I stop? <laughs> <laughs> the list goes on To and the and next on big project that I'm getting everyone very excited about, which will, I don't actually have a due date for it yet or when, it's, when I will be announcing it. So hold your horses. Hold be, your horses. Be patient. It will be this year, though, I promise. I actually wanted it done last year, but life got in the way. <laughs> yeah, that, that tends to happen. Because, yeah, I still, even though I've I've got, you know, my baby, my, my rape it up, I still have, uh, you know, a social life to uphold and a yeah. relationship and family. And, yeah, it's, it's a lot to handle, but over the eight years I've done it, I've really figured out work-life balance yeah yeah i think that's essential for what anything has to be done like oh, yeah. you really need to work out how you approach life when you get to a certain age oh my god yeah definitely because i've even um added over the last year or so meditation into my life and that's just changed everything how i view everything um i used to be really stressed I used to have a really bad acne problem for that exact reason and now it's just everything's carefree mm. it's beautiful and especially when you're an entrepreneur like myself and you have so many things to balance you need to do that yeah just to you know get back to yourself and and take care of yourself and be healthy yeah. hmm. so we're gonna play a little game oh okay it's got, it's called, i like games <laughs> it's called quick fire okay so i'm gonna I'm give, a bit nervous <laughs> now so i'm gonna give you a series of 10 questions little okay. 10 little snippets the first thing that comes to your mind go all right. <laughs> I'm terrified now. <laughs> You'll be fine. This is the first time I've done it, so I'm terrified too. Okay. Okay. Ready? Hopefully they're easy. <laughs> oh, they're pretty basic. I don't know if my mind's very good at thinking quickly. <laughs> okay. Ready? This is why I don't do acting for improvisation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go. Color. Pink. Food. Pasta. Hobby. Dancing. Game. Like video game or game? Either board game, video game. Up to you. Twister. Band. Band. Oh my god. One Direction. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're not really a band anymore, but. Yeah. Era. Sorry. Era. All fifties. Movie. Um. This means war. TV. So many times. <laughs> Dynasty. For TV. For TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Achievement. Um. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting Hugh Jackman, that was a big achievement. <laughs> and quote. Everything happens for a reason. I really like that quick fire. <laughs> that is so good. Um, <laughs> so you just said colour. Once I said pink, I was like, why didn't I say purple? It's my favourite colour. <laughs> Join the club. Favourite colour is purple. Band, yeah, One Direction. I, 
I think I have different ones now, but One Direction I think is yeah. holds it holds a special place in it your heart. It does. It will always hold a special place in my heart. There's a message for you, One D. If you want to make Lauren happy, get back together. Or just do an interview with me. I'll be very happy. You don't have to get back together. Just do an interview with me. So come back for one day, only. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting together for one day. And that's just for it. the interview for Rave It Up. <laughs> um, so what are your ultimate plans for Rave It Up? Ooh, well, the big project, obviously. Again, stay tuned. Stay Just tuned, please. Hold it. You Wait. hype it up, okay? Tell all your friends, and I promise you, you will not be let down. It's gonna be so good. Because that is really, I'm so excited for it, because that is really gonna, when Rave It Up's just gonna blow up. Not badly, I mean, blow up in a good way. <laughs> blow up in a good way, it's gonna be in front of everyone's faces. So, all about the contacts in the industry, guys. Lovely. <laughs> uh, and. Ultimate goal, like I'm very, I'm a planner. I always plan. Yeah. Um, as you probably noticed over the week, if you've <laughs> known me. And my ultimate goal, you know, I've got my 10 year plan, and I want to do something like an equivalent of the Ellen Show here in Australia, because we have nothing like that. And because my show is so casual, and you know, the guests love coming on the show, I want to do like a sit down talk show just like her, uh, but put my own little twist on it. So. Um, well, there you go. Yeah, as I said, let all your friends know, and if you have any contacts in the TV industry, please <laughs> let them know. I mean, I, I have several, but if you know the right person to get a Rave It Up TV show, please let me know. Thank you. So the, Email me, <laughs> lauren at raveituptv.com. <laughs> I'll put a link in case you missed it. Thank you. So, you always finish your interviews this way, so I'm now going to ask you the question. Knowing what you know now... What would you tell your 14-year-old oh, self? Oh, you're going to turn that back on me. Yes. <laughs> it's good because I, I do have my answer to this. It was really funny because I was looking back on 14-year-old photo or around that of, of myself and I'm like, oh my goodness, that girl. Like, I look so different. And I'm like, oh, she's around there, like 13. I had braces and I think I got them off around 14. But as I said before, Empower Yours, the shyest person you'd ever meet. So if I could tell my 14-year-old self anything, it would be to be more confident, first of all, because I definitely was not. Um, and also to speak up for yourself. And, you know, I think back then I did not know that everything happens for a reason. I used to, you know, if I had a failure, I'd be like, oh my God, life hates me. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club. And then also not to care what other people think. Because uh, I really did. You know, I'd wake up every morning and I only just recently had an interview with Ali Athanasio, who's a curve model, and it was all about body image and loving yourself within. And I could not agree with her more when she said this because this was exactly what I did. We would wake up every morning before school and figure out how we wanted to wear our hair just for the very reason of what people are going to think of us. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, is someone going to think I'm beautiful today if I wear my hair this way? And I'm sure a lot of girls can agree around that age at school. If that's the case, yeah. comment. I want to Comment know. below. I want to know if you relate to this. So I'd definitely tell her to pocket what other people think. Just <laughs> love yourself because that is something that I, I love myself. People think I'm so, <laughs> like, a, I got a big ego. I do not. I just, I think you need to love yourself first because how is anybody else supposed to love you if you don't love yourself? Yeah, so, of course. Um, and love yourself for who you are. Don't try to change yourself, you know, just because, oh, you know, that another person looks like that or has that in their life. Just, you know, if, if you believe in God, God made you how you are for a reason. You know, we're all different. Nobody's the same. So embrace your individuality. Yes. Cool. That was, that was like half advice for my 14 year old self, <laughs> half advice for everyone else. <laughs> it works out either way. Good. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining me. You're very welcome. Again, thank, thank you for having me. No worries. Again, thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. So that's going to do it here. So cheers everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then fire up that like button. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And if you're new to the channel, then subscribe for more videos like this one with the lovely person. And more videos. The lovely to... person. <laughs> <laughs> the lovely person named Lauren. Thank you. <laughs> and more videos to come your way very, very soon. Cheers again. And until next time, I'll see all of you in the next one. Bye, guys. See ya.
good. Best intern that's interviewed me. Just <laughs> <laughs> yes. High five. That makes me happy. <laughs>